And that is exactly what he has done. 34 and 21 in his fifth year as the head coach of this Ole Miss football team. He says they need to take it to the next level. Alabama won the toss, deferred, so Ole Miss will receive. And a flag down as the ball sails out of bounds. That will be a good field position for the Ole Miss offense to start this game. And for an update on a couple of big-time injuries, let's go down to Buzz Baker. Dave, you mentioned a Brody Croyle uh, two sort of uh, brace situation. One keeps the shoulder from going up like this. The other keeps it from going out. Took him about 30 minutes to get him in it, but he's ready to go. And Jesse Mitchell, who had arthroscopic surgery on his knee, the big man for Ole Miss, will play today. He was bouncing around. He says he's great and ready to go. Thank you, Buzz. I think that Jesse Mitchell... Uh, situation is something we will keep an eye on when that Ole Miss defense comes out on the football field. They'll need to stop the run today, and they need Big Jesse in there. They certainly do, Dave, but you don't want to risk him losing him for three or four games, so they'll watch him very carefully. From the 35 after the penalty, pick up of about four yards for Tremaine Turner. Let's take a look. Oh, we'll wait just a moment to get to those starting lineups. But you're pretty familiar with who runs the show at Ole Miss. Yeah. Eli Manning, number 10 in the shotgun formation, and second down and six from the 39. First pass in the game from Eli is complete to Chris Collins, the senior. Here's our Chevy starting lineups after that Ole Miss first down. Chris Collins, second all-time in receiving yards. He is about to set about every receiving record you can here at Ole Miss. Justin Sawyer, keep an eye on him. He'll probably rotate quite a bit at center with Chris Spencer today. They'll need some help. A couple of big bodies up on that Alabama defensive front they'll have to worry about. Offensive line a little bit banged up, as most are, at this point of the season. Eli Manning completing 62% of his passes. Over 1,800 yards this year, 14 touchdowns, six interceptions. Leads the league in passing yards at nearly 316 a game. Here's Turner to the midfield strike. Gain of four. Here's that uh, Alabama defense. Antoine Odom, Ma Childress, Anthony Bryant, not McKay Lozier. Now, uh, McKay Lozier did not play last week for personal reasons, but he's back in the lineup. D'Amico Ryan, I can't wait to see D'Amico yeah. play. 85 tackles leads the Southeastern Conference. As a matter of fact, the two top tacklers in the SEC reside in Tuscaloosa. Roman Harper, the safety, has 72 total tackles this year. Manning fires. Pass is bobbled and nearly picked off by Alabama at the 45. Intended receiver was Chris Collins, and that was Charlie Pepra on the coverage. There's Mike Shula in his first year. Three and four start, only 38 years old. Second youngest head coach in Division 1A football. And Dave, it's going to be interesting to see what Alabama does. They think they have a couple keys on Old Miss. They said that when Old Miss went to the two back, they'd go to play action and their run. When they went to the shotgun, it was all underneath passing. So we'll see if that really comes true in their game plan. Third down and six. The out pattern is caught by Kerry Johnson. Ramsey Robinson, the nickelback, on the coverage, a gain of 16, and that'll be a Rebel first down. Boy, if you're David Cutcliffe, you want to see Eli Manning on, and this is on when you throw this touch. Look at the distance on that ball, right exactly where the receiver could come down with it, and Johnson does. That's what you want to see, your quarterback hot early. Manning, two of three for 23 yards. Five man front for the Crimson Tide. Little throw back to the far side of the field. Bill Flowers makes the catch, but might have lost a yard. Oh, a great play there by Charlie Pepra, the, the corner. He doesn't make that tackle. That's going to go a long time. That's that little underneath screen where you run the two linemen out there. He came up, played it well. Pepra, the sophomore out of Plano, Texas, has 40 tackles to his credit. 40 tackles would lead many teams yeah. in the league, but not at Alabama. You know, that's one of the problems with Alabama right now. Their defense is playing a lot of snaps. Offense the last four games has not produced the kind of the number of plays that Mike Shula would like, meaning the defense is on the field quite a bit. Here comes a corner blitz. And LaShawn Pearson 
Might have leaned forward for a yard. That'll bring up a third down. And Dave, that's one of those plays where they were in shotgun. Alabama thinks that uh, Ole Miss is going to throw underneath. So what do you do? You bring pressure. It's going to be a. They think it's going to be a short pass. You bring pressure. That time they brought it from the corner and they guessed right. The last four games, Dave, this Ole Miss football team has scored on their opening drive. Right now they're looking at a third down attempt from the 33. They are in field goal position for Jonathan Nichols, who has a 54-yarder this year. Little play action. Manning throws. Passes dropped incomplete right at the first down marker by Kerry Johnson. And that'll bring up a fourth down. Boy, that's a pass that Kerry Johnson should have had. Threw that ball in there. That ball was delivered. You got to help your quarterback out. And speaking of Nichols, the junior from Greenwood, Mississippi, will attempt a 51-yarder. He hit a 51-yarder against Vanderbilt in the opening game, but trumped that with his 54-yarder that won the game. So we know he's got the leg. He's 16 of 17 on field goals this year. And it is good. Pretty impressive stuff from Jonathan Nichols. And Ole Miss has scored on their opening drive, which went eight plays. We'll be back. And Alabama set to take over on their first possession after this kickoff, after a 51-yard field goal by Jonathan Nichols gave the Ole Miss Rebels an early three to nothing lead. crowd on their feet. A five yard return. Webb Lewis or back up fullback. This is running through a tackle. Watch this. You want to see a decleater? When you see the bottom of those shoes come up, that's a decleater. Man, what a stick. And here comes Brody Croyle. His eighth career start sat out last week. 11 touchdowns, nine interceptions this year. And his first play, not surprisingly, a handoff to Sean Williams, who might have lost a yard. Travis Blanchard makes the tackle. Here's our Chevy starting lineup for the Alabama Crimson Tide. Giannis Luke, 14 straight games for the reception. Donald Clark gets the start at tight end today. Tim Castile is your fullback. Ray Fulgham, your split in. His offensive line, Wesley Britt, 33rd straight start. Big man, too, at 312 pounds. J.B. Klosner is playing well at center. This is one of your tackles. After the loss of a yard, it'll bring up second down and 11 now. Boy, fires. Pass is picked off. Travis Johnson down to the 23 yard line. It looked like a Bama receiver slipped on his cup. Dave, I'm not sure it wasn't Sean Williams, but it was a little curl pattern across the middle. And what he does is he just falls down. Good time. Watch this. He's going to make a little play action fake. Now come back. Look downfield. The arm looks fine. He throws the strike. But the receiver's already falling down. There you see him in the right side of the screen. Old Miss capitalizes, reacts quickly to the football, and they have outstanding field position. Didn't look like Brody was hurting on the throw. Elon Manning looking for six. Got it. Touchdown. Three yards. Well, I told you that I thought Eli Manning looked sharp. You will not see a better pass than this to Tay Biddle. Back of the end zone, all the way back over here, you're going to see it. Look at that perfectly thrown one foot down. You cannot throw the ball better than that. Point after is up and good by Jonathan Nichols. He definitely didn't drop that one back after a word from your local station. Well, Mike Shula's football team down 10 early. We haven't even played five minutes, Dave. This is uh, not the kind of start Alabama wanted. Ball falls off the tee. We'll redo it. But if you're Mike Shula, 
What are you thinking? What do you try well, to do now? Well, you've made a mistake. You've had your quarterback throw an interception. But you've got to come out. You've got to go back to what your game plan is. Don't abandon your game plan. He's a young head coach. And, but he knows it. It's early in the game. There's a lot of time left. There's 10, almost 10 and a half minutes left. So don't abandon your game plan. Lee Rogers will kick it again. Bounces at the 11, picked up by Ramsey Robinson. Ramsey flagged down at the 25, and that's where Ramsey is tripped up. A return of 16 for the Crimson Tide. Ryan Lester makes the tackle for the Rebels. That'll be holding against yeah. the Crimson Tide. A referee today, by the way, is Thomas Ritter. Receiving team, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, first down. Dave, we talk a lot about coordination between a quarterback and a wide receiver. Watch when the ball comes up. Biddle hasn't even made his debate. Now, now he's just starting to go into the end zone. The ball is thrown, and look at this. It's thrown to a spot that only he can catch. And he goes up high for it. It's in the back of the end zone. Just a perfect pass. Great coordination. Here's Sean Williams. Over the 20, picks up about five on the play, maybe six. Here's the Ole Miss defense. Josh Cooper. You can scratch uh, McKinley Boykin, I guess. Jesse Mitchell probably running some plays in there. Justin Wade, LP Spence. We will see McKinley Boykin, by the way. He just uh, giving up that spot to Jesse Mitchell, perhaps. But this is a defense that, uh, after giving up over 600 passing yards to Texas Tech, has really surprised me in the way they've responded. A lot of teams might have folded their tents. Absolutely. They felt they were in good position in that game. They just felt that the quarterback had an incredible day. We'll see today. Opening the flag, Sean Williams, he's got some running room. Williams runs out of bounds, just shy of the 50-yard line. A gain of 25 and a great play call. And Brody, Bro excuse me, not Brody, Brody helping up an injured Alabama player, Clint Johnston, as he hobbles off the field. Well, Dave, you have to be multi-talented to play in the SEC, and that means receiving the ball as well as running. We've talked a lot about Sean Williams and his running ability. Great speed to get to the outside. We talked about how durable and tough he is. Boy, he, he, that's a nice play. He picked up a lot of yards. Got him out almost to midfield. I love Shaw to I he know might you do. Be my favorite player in this league. Here's Williams. He gets stopped at the 45 and driven back. They will mark it. At about the 46, a loss of two. Eric Oliver led the way. He leads the team in tackles. Well, the defensive coordinator, Chuck Grisback, told us we have to play in Alabama's backfield, and that's what they're doing. They run a 4-2-5 defense. You see Eric Oliver, number one tackler, number 26. He's right up there in the face on the line of scrimmage. 46 tackles. He can add another one to his tackle for loss total. Sean Williams dancing his way across midfield into Ole Miss territory at about the 48, a gain of seven on the play. Daniel Booth makes the stop for the Rebels. You know, I get the feeling that Alabama has not abandoned their game plan. They came out here with the intent to throw safe passes, use Brody Coyle, don't let him get hurt, use Sean Williams a lot, use his talents. They have not abandoned it. They're still in their game plan. It's early in this first quarter, a lot of time. Big third down for the Crimson Tide right now, third and six. Ray Hudson checks in to the backfield for the Crimson Tide. Three receivers to the top, one to the near side. Coyle will throw it. Has his man who is popped. Dre Fulgham gets leveled about two yards shy of the first down by Kelvin Robinson. A gain of four, one of the bigger hits I've seen this year. Wow. Coming out, he's turning. Now, Brody Crow sees the pressure from his left, gets rid of it quick, but watch this turn back inside. You know, they talked about the uh, the old Miss having an attitude on offense with the running game. Man, they've got an attitude on defense. Those are big hits. So a fourth down and one now, and the Crimson Tide are going for it. Trying to draw him off 
outside with a hard count. That'll be a delay a game against the Crimson Tide, and they will punt it away. Drive started at the Alabama 16, and it will stall at the Ole Miss 44-yard line. And Dave, for Ole Miss, that's great discipline on defense that you come out there and you make sure that you don't jump offside on that hard count, get suckered into making a mistake. Mike Espy back to return the punt. He'll stand at about the 10-yard line. Oh, Freeland to punt it away. He has done an exceptional job the last couple of weeks for Alabama in the punting department. Good high coverage kick. That will bounce at the nine and bounces into the end zone. A 49-yard kick. It was a nice high kick, but they just couldn't stop it before it crossed the end line. It's 10. It's enough. Eli Manning back under center at the 20-yard line. Goes to Turner. Turner with a hole, takes it out over the 30. They will spot it at the 34 yard line. A 15 yard pickup. Charles Jones finally drags him down. And Dave, you talked about running by committee. That's what they get out of Turner. That little juke in there, that little kind of quick stutter step. Look at his feet. See his feet kind of just coming down real, real fast, changing direction, looking for that seam. He's not going to break over top of somebody, but he's going to find that little slide through. Once again in the eye formation. Tailback. Lorenzo Towns at your fullback. Turner drives for a couple of yards. That'll bring up a second down and about seven. Audible's on the line. Here's Collins. Out over the 40 to 42. We had a chance to to talk to John Latina yesterday, the offensive coordinator, and we asked him about running the football, and it was amazing when you asked him the question, well, is running the football about attitude? And he said, oh, yeah, I mean, he got all over that. And how they, he talked about how they lost that attitude last year. Yes, exactly what he said, that we didn't have an attitude, but we now go out there, he said, we're much more physical, we practice harder, and he said, if those guys aren't scratching for an extra yard, we've got somebody behind them that will. Third down and a couple. Turner tries to get to the outside and falls forward. It'll be close to a first down. Anthony Madison hanging on from his quarterback position. We'll have to wait for the spot, but very close to the first down. And Dave, this is a good example of attitude. Watch this. He's going to come inside, and now he's going to bounce outside. When he goes outside, right there, he's hit, short of the line. Does he stop? Look at him just stretching, trying to make that extra yard. Joe Kahn's the defensive coordinator. Tell you what, his defense only yielding 95 yards a game on the ground. That's fifth in the Southeastern Conference. You go fifth. Yeah. Well, nationally, they're 19th. <laughs> I mean, that shows you that'll be a first down. But that just shows you, though, how tough this league is against the run. I mean, you're fifth in your league, but 19th in the country. Well, Joe Kine is one of my favorites. You talk about favorite coach. Yeah. I love him. I mean, he's just a wonderful man. Oh, man. He says, Mom sent him a cake after they won the first game. He says, mail it to him. He says, he says uh, <laughs> their mom sends everybody something. And it's your birthday, you'll get a pie. You win a football game, you get a cake. Oh, she hasn't sent us anything yet. No, I haven't seen any brownies or anything, Mom. Man, he's going deep. Looking for Terry Bell. He's got it. Touchdown, Rebels. 56 yards and man. this early there's still four almost four and a half minutes or over four and a half minutes left in the first quarter but this has been an incredible show by Old Miss Ramsey Robinson again he gets hit at the 12 and our referee says he will be down it'll be Alabama football just outside the 10 
in the eye formation. Here's Shaw Williams. Look at Shaw keep those feet moving out to the 20 yard line a gain of eight. That will take effect at the end of this season he announced it. Last night of course his Bulldogs taking on Auburn later this afternoon. Here's the handoff to Williams didn't break that one lost a yard. Stop them again. They're going to get the ball back on offense. Bo free. Linda punted away. Bo averaged 45, almost 46 yards a kick last week against Southern Miss. Good kick. That'll send Espy back to inside the 30. Espy trying to get a block. Gets one. Espy down the right side. And he steps out of bounds at the 36. He tried to walk the tightrope, but stepped out of bounds, and they will bring it back to the 36 yard line. Well, uh, S F Dave SB said that he thought he could return one last week. Well, what a wall he got. Look at the wall of blockers, all the blue shirts coming in. It's the old picket fence they used to come in. Right here, you're going to see him step out of bounds, right there. He's out of bounds. Now look at him trying to tight rope. No, he's way out of bounds. The back judge, Timothy Smith, right on it. An injured Alabama player. Greg McClain, a fullback. He will get up. Greg got hit pretty hard, but Greg is, uh, has popped a few people in his day as well. Before. You get uh, Alabama fans you get too worried about this. Let me throw you this note out. Remember 1989 Ole Miss jumped out to a 21 to nothing first quarter lead at Jackson Mississippi. The Tide came back to win that one 62 to 27. Manning passes caught by his tight end Eric Rice who is might be healthy for the first time in a long time. Derek Pope playing on a bad ankle gets back to make the tackle again a four. Turnover more than yeah, anything. Absolutely. They need something to happen. Turner bounces to the 15, to the 14. Gain of seven. Well, that's those quick little happy feet just dancing in there, just kind of scampers around there. Carlos Andrews misses a tackle in there, but he's just scampering up inside there. Turner's having a hot day. Manning's having a hot day. Tay Biddle's having a hot day. You're having a hot day. <laughs> Amen, brother. Amen. <laughs> it's all sweaty up here. <laughs> Boy, I'll tell you. Second down and three. Here's Turner again. Swarmed this time by the tide. Dave, that's what Alabama does so well. They get to the football. They've got a lot of talented athletes. They've got great team speed and size. They run to the ball. When he comes outside here, look at the number of white shirts. One slows him down, but look at the number of white shirts surrounding him. That's what you've got to do. You've got to get to the ball carrier. You've got to bring him down with people. Lots of them. Turner, six carries, 33 yards today. He stays in the game at tailback on third down and one. It's Turner to the 10. And that will be a first down. Tackle made by Antoine Odom. And Dave, I'm giving a lot of credit to Turner running the football, but hey, he's got some hosses up front and Stallings and Buckles and Sawyer, Johnson and Woodruff coming off that football. They're all been that 300 pound range, just drive blocking off there. Ole Miss today, eight runs, nine passes in their 17 plays. First and ten. Hand off. Brandon Jacobs, touchdown Rebels. Right up the middle. His first touchdown. For the sophomore at a Long Beach, Mississippi, and the Rebels' offense is clicking. Well, it's motion on the play, and it draws the outside backers, but he just breaks right up the gut. 
I mean, just bouncing off of people. Brandon Jacobs is not going to have anybody bring him down. We talked about running with an attitude. Well, we're seeing running with an attitude all the way down. Jonathan Nichols already with two point afters today, trying to make it three straight. He has. Uh, There's a, the first break of the day, if you yeah. will, for Alabama. But Nichols came in hitting 74 straight point afters. A band good. That drive, five plays, 35 yards, took up two minutes and six seconds. And Mike Shula probably as baffled as we are. 24 nothing with 11 seconds to go in the first quarter. Man, oh man. <laughs> well, I've been in situations like this where everything is going wrong. But what you have to do is you have to work your back, way back into this football game if you're Alabama. One score at a time. Start moving the chains, make some points. They need to keep Ole Miss out of the end zone in the process. Well, Alabama should get good field position with this penalty. From the 20, Lee Rogers kicks it off. Ray Hudson. Makes a man miss and Hudson to the 40 to the 44 yard line but a flag down near midfield. B Brown. Makes the tackle for Ole Miss backup cornerback. Man oh man Alabama oh just can't get it going today. If they play like this they can certainly win. Golly they are. Couple of flags down. It's like uh, somebody jumped the gun. Well, if you're Alabama, you've got to gather your composure. You've got to get back in it. Just you're having everything go wrong. Just go out there, play your position, move the chains, put some drives together. Ball start on the offense. Five yard penalty remains first down. Would you please reset the game clock? Five seconds. Five seconds. Well, this is the kind of day it's been so far. Alabama came in. The least penalized team in the Southeastern Conference. 36 penalties for 302 yards. They've been penalized three times already in the first quarter. Well, it's going to be tough for Brody Coyle because he's the young quarterback out there, and you're going, wow, we're down 24 points. We've got to get him back in a hurry. But you don't. You've got a long time in this game to play. Coyle. He doesn't want to run a whole lot with a bad shoulder. He gets down on the turf. Oh, he hit him late. Yeah, late hit. McKinley Boykin, the sophomore from Bessemer. And Vaughn Hutchins came in. Oh, that's a foolish play by Boykin. That's just foolish coming in there. Boykin, you don't need to hit him. He's going down. Everybody could see that. Personal foul, 15 yards tacked on. Is this what Alabama needs? Well, the crowd's going to boo, but yeah. that... You, you know he's the quarterback and you know there's going to be a flag or there'll be eye in the quarterback. <laughs> See right there he's down. There's the late hit. It wasn't much of a hit to be honest with you. It wasn't much of a hit but it was a hit. Got to protect the quarterback. Ab absolutely especially that left shoulder. That's the end of the first quarter. We'll step aside. It's been a hard hitting contest in Alabama. Down in a hole, 24 nothing. See you back, Kim. If you're an Ole Miss fan, you can't uh, really find much fault at all with that first quarter. If you're Alabama, you're just kind of going, "What in the <laughs> world just happened?" Oh, this is the shock of all shocks. If you're an Alabama fan, first down and ten for the Crimson Tide. Here's Ray Hudson. Ray running hard. Ray has really caught the eye of the coaches the past few weeks. He's running hard. Gain of six there. Our Gatorade first quarter wow. stats and those passing yards 121 Eli Manning is just right on the money today. That's just incredible 170 yards to 61. Gosh what can you say. I told you Eli Manning started off strong. He threw that out pass and it was just perfect Dave. You knew he was on. And the fact that Ole Miss rushed for 49 yards helped that passing game a little bit. Good hard running from Ray Hudson. He'll take it inside the 30, gain of nine. Eric Oliver makes the tackle for the Rebels. 
And Dave, sometimes you make a switch back there, one to give Shaw Williams a little bit of rust or rest, but you bring in a Ray Hudson in there, and he's just coming off the football, getting a hard runner, and you just go with him for a little while. See if you can keep on moving those chains. Ray Hudson, the 200 pound junior out of Bonifay, Florida. We'll get the handoff again. Ray Hudson down close to the 20. No marking about the 21 yard line. Another big chunk of yardage for Ray, a gain of eight. Nice feet into the hole. Good vision. He saw the backside cut. When he comes up in here, watch. He's got those little dance feet too. And when he sees that cut, he gets to the outside. And good blocking up front. Coming off that line, Alexander. Mathis just blowing him off that line, controlling the line of scrimmage. And a good hole from that offensive line. Now we're looking at some Alabama football. This is what I thought we would see at the beginning. Early kickoff, they might not have been uh, quite awake to that time of the morning. Trying to get the first down. It was second down and two. He might have moved the chains. Looks like they will spot it at about the 18, which will be good enough for a first down. Well, I thought it very interesting in talking with Chuck Drisback yesterday, a defense coordinator. He said, as Eric Oliver plays, so do we. And Eric Oliver's the safety, number 26. And he plays up in the line of scrimmage. He's the force man, comes up, makes a lot of tackles. They need him to step up right now if you're an old Miss fan. Well, there's Chuck Drisback all the way over there. First and 10. Coyle to throw it. As his man, and that'll be a gain of about nine for Tim Castile, the true freshman out of Birmingham. Castile just kind of found his way to this lineup. Coach is uh, just a football guy. You know, it's one of those guys that just knows and understands the game. Of course, he comes from a great football family. He even has a couple of younger brothers that are pretty good players as well in that Birmingham area. Well, you just like effort, and that's what he did. They said he played full speed all the time. But I've been impressed a little bit on this drive with Brody Coyle. He's just keeping it under control, not trying to do anything spectacular, just move the chains. Handoff goes to Shaw Williams, who's back into the football game. He needed about two and a half for the first down, and that will be very close. I think they'll probably move the chains. And that'll set up a first and goal. And this has been a very impressive drive for Alabama. Remember, this is a club that ran it 50 times last week against Southern Miss. Only threw it seven. Yeah. Well, they had to, losing your quarterback. But I've been impressed, too, with just trying to keep the composure on the play. Just come out there. Don't try to do anything spectacular. Don't try to score real, real fast. Just get back in your game plan and play tough. That's what they've done best in this drive. Eighth play of the drive coming up. Hand off Shaw to Williams trying to find a seam. He takes it down to about the three yard line. Give him a gain of four. When did you see those Shaw Williams that time? He just kind of darted into hold. When he saw that little seam, he just exploded. You just saw him plant those feet. He's a dart runner. It's tough. 5'9, 189 pounds. Golly, a, what, 150 carries coming into this game, Dave? That's incredible. Yeah, that, that's what impresses me is his ability to stay on the football field and carry it. 30 times also returned some kicks catch it out of the backfield. I mean this guy has it all. And he has the football now looking for six and give it to him. Sean Williams takes it in from the four and the tide are on the board. They did exactly what they had to do. They stayed down with the basics. I like the way he cuts. The feet are close to the ground, and when he sees it, he just sees that end zone and blows in there. But when you're running that upright, your offensive line is giving you some holes. Talked about Mathis and Alexander in there and Klossner. Just blowing them off the line, controlling. Bostickers up and good, and a good-looking drive from Alabama that started at their own 35. It took fans make their way over here to Oxford Mississippi Mike Shula's first start or I guess I should say first action as a college quarterback came against Ole Miss in 1983 the Tide won that game 40 to nothing Ronald McClendon 
Ronald McClendon to the 30-yard line. Good return from the man they called Goldie, a return of 26 yards. Well, a Jiffy Lube well-oiled machine scoring drive was that last drive by the Crimson Tide. 65 yards, capped off by a three-yard touchdown run from Shaw Williams, who has scored all of Alabama's rushing touchdowns this year. That makes it 10 straight, and if you go back to last season, that's 11 straight rushing touchdowns for Shaw Williams. Ronald McClendon now the tailback for the Rebels. He bounces his way for a couple of yards. McClendon, Dave, had a, a just a tremendous game, over 100 yards against Florida a couple of weeks ago. Really the difference I felt in that game was a long 52-yard touchdown run. What do you think about it? We talked about it a little bit at the open about running back by committee. Well, I like it because each one brings a different talent, but I, I agree with you. I think McClendon is really the key. He's that, he's that dynamic runner. He's got a lot of movement. He's just a power runner, puts his head down. I like him. But if you're old Miss right now, the one thing you don't want to do is get complacent leading 24 to 7. Stay with your game plan. Manning under pressure. To the 35. Gain of about four. Dave, the best place to get pressure on a quarterback is to come from the outside, force him up in the pocket. You're going to see Manning get back to watch this. This is the pressure right here that forces him up in the pocket. Now when he gets up there, he's got a lot of people reacting. You don't get to Eli Manning very often. Mark Anderson. The sophomore out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, the first man to put some pressure on Eli. And the Rebels looking now at a third down and four. Mario Hill in motion. Manning rolls to the far side. Nowhere to go and just throws it out of bounds. And that's why Manning doesn't get sacked a lot. Just gets rid of it before he gets hit. But good defensive stand by the Tide. Maybe that's the momentum they needed. They're forcing Ole Miss now to punt the football away with 9.21 to go in the second quarter. Well, if you're David Cutcliffe, that's not what you wanted. If you're Mike Shula, that's exactly what you wanted. You want to come out, let your defense hold him, get the football back. But for David Cutcliffe, he wanted to move some change. Keep that, keep that pressure on Alabama. You know, 24 nothing looked a lot better than uh, the 17 points now. Yeah. <laughs> Mathematics. <laughs> I don't even have a comment. I know. Cody <laughs> Ridgeway lets a kick just sail into the end zone. He hammered it 64 yards which matches his career long. Well, now he's going to expect his team to find a way. They're at the 20-yard line. They just had a nice 65-yard drive. Croyle is going to throw it. Out pattern is caught on the far side by Dre Fulgham, the senior. Gain of 15. Broyle looked good on that throw. Yeah, I was just going to say, I think that brace, forget about the brace. This is a strike. When he comes back here, watch him step forward and deliver that football. Just drive in there and throw that ball. That's a well-thrown ball. Now, this is a great route. Come outside, just kind of turn up right there. Fulton does good concentration. If he could have kept those feet inbound right there, we might have been striking up the band here because that, uh, that was close to going. Here's Williams. Picks up eight on the play. L.P. Spence brings him down. A little bit more confidence, a little bit more uh, pep in the step, if you will, right now from Alabama. Well, the point I was making about the 24 compared to 17-point <laughs> lead, I want to go back to that. You know you get comfortable. You know you're out there, your defense player, I've been out there. Hey, we're up by 24 points, no problem. All of a sudden, we're up by 17, still no problem. Oh, we're up by 10. Oh, we got a problem. <laughs> John Williams spins. That'll be a first down for the Crimson Tide out over the 45-yard line. Alabama's averaging 168 yards a game on the ground, fifth in the Southeastern Conference. A little over four yards per carry. Shot already with yeah. 12 carries. Average down a little bit. Shaw came in averaging five and a half yards per carry. He leads the SEC in total rushing yards with 822. And leads the league in carries with 150 coming into this afternoon's game. I mean, he had just been a workhorse.
Marlboro's pass is caught by Giannis Lou. The senior out of Phoenix City, Alabama, picks up 14. Travis Johnson makes the tackle for the Rebels and move the chains once again. Absolutely. Good route here. What he's going to do is just come in and curl right around there. Now, throw the ball. The ball was thrown on time. It's a little bit high, but Luke went up and got it, and they are moving the chains. All of a sudden, you've got a, an old Miss crowd here saying, hey, wait a minute. We had a 24-point lead. Now, Alabama staying with the basics, driving them off the ball, Dave, controlling it. So the Rebels move the chains. The Rebels are watching the Tide move the chains. That's what I meant. Yeah. I knew what I meant. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. No, I said that. Oh, oh. See, you just think you said that. <laughs> Troyal has some time. Throwing deep as his man caught at the five-yard line. It's full jump. Coverage by Travis Johnson. 35-yard pickup, and the Tide are in business. First and goal again. Well, if you had any doubts about this quarterback having a bad shoulder, forget about it. This is a strike again. Good setting up in the pocket. Good time to throw the football. Delivers a strike up in there. And look at this. Watch Fulton just use his body. Shields his body. You see how he used that body? Slowed down. Caught the ball at the extension. Good coordination. Good concentration on the ball. Another big catch for Fulton. He came in averaging 18 yards per reception. That'll help that number after gaining 35. Hand off Shaw to Williams. Bouncing off a couple of Rebel defenders. Inside the five, down to about the four-yard line. 6.40 to go before halftime. And don't look for anything fancy here from Alabama. They know their strength of their offense is up front and those big linemen. They think they can control that line of scrimmage, and then you have a running back like Shaw Williams, all you got to do is make three yards at a play. Boy, another score here before halftime. That's huge. Man. Stop. Maybe lost a yard on the play. Shaw Williams hit by Wes Scott and a couple of his friends on that Ole Miss defense. Well, good mix up here. Now look at this. See those backers coming up in there? Bang, come right up in the hole, play their run. They were playing run all the time, doing a little bit of something a little bit different. Chuck Chris back, offensive defense coordinator, changing it. Ole Miss needs to think, hold them to a field goal. Third and goal from the five. The crowd rising to their feet. the Crimson Tide field goal unit. Boy, a great stop if you're an old Miss fan. He just ran out of room. He's going to come to weak side here. Look at the pressure there. Bourne's just getting pressure, driving him off the line. You've got Charlie Anderson, 85, getting back in there. There was nowhere to go. 37-yard kick from Brian Bostic. Excuse me, a 32-yard kick. And it is good. So another pretty good drive from the Crimson Tide. Down a couple of touchdowns. It was 24 to nothing, but Alabama back in. Today's game is brought to you in part by Hyundai. And it has been quite entertaining to say the least. 24 to 10. We're not even to halftime yet. We've got four minutes and 40 seconds to go before intermission. Alabama's had back-to-back -back successful drives. The first resulting in a Shaw Williams touchdown run. The second in a Brian Bostic 32-yard field goal. And that's after Eli Manning lit up this Alabama defense in the first quarter. But he hadn't seen much of the field here in the second quarter. Kyle Robinson to kick it off for the Crimson Tide. McClendon and Pearson back to return the kick. And it'll be McClendon. Flag down at the 25-yard line. Terrence Jones, the freshman linebacker, makes the special teams tackle for the Crimson Tide. Thomas Ritter, our referee, the man in the white cap, 
this afternoon on a beautiful day in Oxford. There were two fouls on the play. Had encroachment on the kicking team. Had holding on the return team. Those penalties offset. Let's go down to Dave Baker, who has our all tell sideline connection. Absolutely. Hey, Peyton, the way that Eli's thrown the ball in this first quarter, he probably wishes you had more Saturdays free. <laughs> That's right. It's always fun to come see him play. It's only once a year during our bye week. I watch the rest of them on TV, usually on Jefferson Pilot, or I get the beta tape sent to me. So, uh, but it's always fun to be here in person. What do, you, what do you think about the way you've seen him throw in person here today? Well, I'm real proud of him. He's off to a great start. I think anytime you're playing a team like Alabama, you always want to get off to a good start. But as you would expect, they're coming back right now. It's going to be a close ball game. It always is in the SEC. It's going to be an exciting game for Everyone. I can only imagine what the phone conversations have been like this fall. There was one weekend between the two of you had 11 TD passes. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you know, we had a pretty good day down in Florida, too. He took care of the Gators, and we took care of the Bucks. So it's been fun. We talked Thursday night. Just talk about college, talk about life, also talk about football. But I'm real proud of him coming back for his senior year and the way he's handled things, and he's having a fun year as well. And Peyton, thanks a bunch. Can you continue having a great year as well? Thanks a lot. All right, we appreciate okay. it. Back up to you, Dave. All right, Buzz down there hobnobbing. <laughs> <laughs> Can't hop now, but a better one than that. Nah, Peyton, just a, just a really, really solid individual. McClendon to the 23 yard line. Ronald McClendon on the return to the 24 yard line. First and 10 on this. You know, Dave, what do you think? Is there pressure with Peyton on the sideline down there? You're Eli Manning, and you got your brother who's certainly making his mark on a national scale now in the NFL. Does that make you a little bit more nervous? Well, you also have your dad in the stands and mom and that. But uh, I, don't, I just don't think that you're going to get, you're not going to rattle Eli Manning. He's got great composure. Olivia sitting right to the right of Archie there. But he's not going to get rattled. He's in his game plan. He's just a great student of the game. I just look for him to move the chains here. They've got to take some pressure off their defense, Dave. They can't go three and out right here and give the ball back to Alabama with three, four minutes to go. Eli had a great first quarter, but Alabama's successful drives have kept him off the field, and it's second down and six. Clock moves under four minutes. Here's the handoff to McClendon. McClendon close to the first down marker, which sits it to 34 in the spring of last year. But McClendon has certainly picked up some of that slack as he picks up the first down and a flag comes flying in at the 45 after the nine yard pickup. Boy, this is an outstanding move by McClendon. I know we're going to listen to the flag and I think it's going to be at the end of the play, but face mask against Alabama. But this is outstanding. And the reason it's outstanding is there was such tremendous penetration in the back. Here. Look at this. When he gets the ball, he actually has to come all the way back here and get his balance. Anthony Bryant was in the backfield. And then he just makes something out of nothing, moves the chains. That is just outstanding. Now see if we see that face mask. There it is right there, right on top of the, right on the mask. Roman Harper. Trying to make the tackle, and in that effort, just grab the face mask. That moves it real close to the midfield stripe, and it's first down and 10. Play action. Manning going up top again, looking for his favorite target, Collins. And a flag goes down, and Collins still very nearly made the catch. Charlie Pepper on the coverage. Well, when we talked to Chris Collins yesterday, he said, we just have something where I can look at Eli and he can look at me and know, and I know when he's coming to me. I never had a doubt on this play action fake. Play action, then come long, he throws it deep. And you're right, Collins almost came down with this ball even after getting held. Look at the hand on the ball, right there. But Dave, if you're Pepra, that's not a bad play for Alabama because it could have been a touchdown absolutely. the other way. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And it nearly was. Collins nearly made the grab. There's Joe Kahn trying to figure out his defense right now as it's first and 10 from the 35. Yeah, when you think about it, not a bad play at all for Pepper. If he felt he was going to get beat. McClendon makes a man miss. 
Picks up a couple on the play. Brought down by Charlie Pepper. When you get down in this situation, you got to think score. You got to take the momentum. You got you're ticking down till halftime. You want to take some momentum into the locker room. Both teams are trying to do that for Alabama. They're trying to get us just get a stop. McClendon in motion. A little razzle dazzle and Alabama had read well. They still played well. Mike Espy gets run out of bounds and another flag is down. Penalty flag on the play. Oh, I, I think, think Ma Childress might have been the way he's talking. He thinks somebody may have uh, clipped him. Yeah, and I think it was Marcus Johnson, number 76. He was peeling back on the play, and a lot of times that was a late delay, late developing play. And I think what he did is I just think he just clipped him in the back, as you said. That's going to take him out of field goal range. Just trying to get that extra little block. Use those hands, you know. Well, Lamar Childers came during the run and a clipping on the offense, 15 yards from the previous spot, remains second down. Well, we may see it here. Let's see if we can see it on tail end. If you don't see it here, we'll see it next. But good, good pursuit. Force him in the backfield. Look at this. Come out there, drive him to the outside. That's just great play. Get that great penetration. The ball is there, the 40, right there's the clip. See the clip right there, right on the ankle. That's a good call. I think Ahmad Childress 95 saw it happen because he gave up pointing fingers at everybody wearing a blue jersey. Second down and 22 now. McKay Lozier had a chance. Pass is caught by Rick Rosano, who's been battling a knee problem all season long. Juwan Garth, the freshman out of Decatur, Alabama, makes the tackle, a gain of six. And Rick Rosano's had a real tough year. He hasn't had a much time on the football field after uh, blowing up a knee a couple of games into this season. And he's a vital part. He's a, a, a very talented fullback. Absolutely. I'll never forget him. Didn't he get engaged on the football field one, one time? I remember that a couple years ago. I hope it was one time. He got a page for it once. I'm sure his wife would like to know. One time. <laughs> Manning, play action. Going to the end zone. Got his man. Touchdown, Kerry Johnson. Dave, two things make this work. A quarterback, quarterback that doesn't quit, and a wide receiver that doesn't quit. Look at him waving right there. Now just dig in there, concentrate. But the other thing was Eli Manning moving around in the pocket, buying a little bit of time, sliding around, get that extra moment. Point after is up and good, but I tell you, he was very close to the line of scrimmage when he let that pass go. And it was a nice one to carry Johnson. 31 first half points for the Rebels. 31 to 10 is our score. Hudson and Robinson back, and Hudson will take a knee and bring it out to the 20 yard line. Alabama only has a minute 39 to work with here before halftime. Here comes some pressure. Pass is caught at the 30 by Brandon Greer, the junior out of Rainbow City, Alabama. I'm going to tell you something about Brody Croyle. He's playing with a separated left shoulder and has completed seven of eight passes for 109 yards. Now, that's a pretty gutsy day. And that, that shoulder's not bothering him at all. That's just a strike, perfectly thrown ball. The timing was accurate. And with a minute and 15 seconds, you've got a lot of time. You can move that ball downfield. Croyle dodges a couple of Ole Miss defenders, and the football is loose. Who's got it? It'll still be Alabama football. It bounced backwards. Ray Hudson had it stripped out of his hands. Ken Bournes forced the fumble. And Dave, you've got to have control of the ball. Why didn't they just fall on it? If they, if they were Ole Miss, they should have just fall on it here. See, they try to pick it up and run with it. That's Ken Bournes. Well, yep. Ken, Ken Bournes is a guy we're saying all the time, and he wasn't even in, in the picture the first couple of weeks. Exactly right. He's got a force fumble, a sack, five tackles already today.
Luton makes the grab. That'll be a first down, and a flag comes in late after the gain of eight. Justin Wade makes the tackle. And Dave, the chains, the chains get moved, so that stops the clock. You're in hurry-up offense. Can you get a field goal try? You're going to get a penalty tacked on to the tail end of this, so that helps if you're an Alabama fan. But they need to move into field goal range. They got 57 seconds to do it. Turn the run. Face mask in fashion. Incidental. Five yards. First down. Well, Alabama has three timeouts remaining sitting in their pocket. Here's a look at that last play, and yes. The incidental is when the hand just gets on the mask. The 15 yards is when you use it to tackle. Burrell steps up in the pocket, fires a bullet, has his man at the 42-yard line. Boy, that was a nice pitch and catch to Brandon Greer. Boy, great timing by Brody Croy on the play. He waited for his receiver to get in that little seam and then just threw a strike. They moved the chains. He just stepped up and threw a bull. I mean, that was a nice looking throw. You got any doubts about his shoulder? Not anymore. Nope. Another bullet over the middle, and it's picked off. He overthrew his receiver, picked off by Vaughn Hutchins, looking for Triandis Luke. And that is a backbreaker. Yeah, for Mike Shulman, he was just getting in the field goal range to get a little bit of confidence in Brody Coral. Overthrew his receiver. I thought his receiver slipped and fell down on the play. But again, good time. He's got good line pressure up here. They're all giving him good time to look back in here. Not a whole lot of blitz pressure. Late there is. Oh boy, that's a good pull off right there. Pull back off by Eric Oliver. Don't get that personal foul. But again, ball overthrown. Good reaction. Well, I'll tell you what, Brody Coyle has two incompletions today. He's 10 of 12. Both incompletions have been intercepted. Boy, Triandis Luke got leveled on the play. He didn't slip. Uh, Ole Miss will be content to run this clock out. Ronald McClendon has that. Alabama thought it was a loose football. They will mark McClendon down at the 23-yard line. Antoine Odom hobbling. Coming up Saturday at 12.30 Eastern, 11.30 Central, Mississippi State heads for the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Quarterback Kevin Fan will lead the charge for the Bulldogs who are trying to scratch back into the SEC West race. Kevin Fan has been impressive this year, but so has this man, Jared Lorenzen, who has passed his way into the record books during his career with the Wildcats. Kentucky hosts Mississippi State in the Jefferson Pilot Sports SEC Game of the Week. Don't miss it. Next Saturday, 12.30 Eastern. Lorenzen had a concussion against South Carolina about 10 days ago. Supposed to play tonight against Ohio. Well, there's a lot of information going on around Jackie Shell, uh, Jackie Sherrill right now as they get ready to take on the Auburn Tigers oh, yeah. this afternoon. Jackie, of course, announcing that he will retire from college coaching effective at the end of this season. And let me tell you what that does to a team when you've got your coach and he's he's announced his retirement. You want to send him out on a good note. So what do you do? You play a lot harder for uh, Tommy Tuberville. That announcement couldn't have come at a worse time. I just go back to just remember 1989 21 nothing Alabama trailed at the end of the first quarter in Jackson Mississippi but the tide came back to win 62 27 so there is some history here but right now Dave I don't know if there's anybody in this league that could stop this Ole Miss offense right I mean they first of all just to put some numbers to this they average just under 40 points a game which is seventh nationally first in the league they're third in the conference in rushing they are first in the conference and fifth in passing fifth nationally in passing and they're 505 yards of total offense first in the southeastern conference and third in America well they, they've got a hot quarterback you're exactly right the stats are all there but they've got a quarterback that is on I'm talking about he's in one of those moments when you just dream about it that will do it for the you know the coach won't admit it right now <laughs> well Thor's on this opening drive he'll start liking him a lot more Ole Miss to kick it off Sean Williams 
back along with Ray Hudson, and it's Williams from the two-yard line. Williams trying to find a little seam, takes it out to the 28. Nice little return for Shawd Williams. And this Alabama offense will come back on the field as Travis Blanchard made that special teams tackle. There's Brody Croyle in there and never really got hit hard. Got pushed around a little bit in there, but that left shoulder, which is separated, he's wearing two braces, which takes quite a while to, to get suited up before a football game, doesn't appear to really be affecting him. And uh, it certainly helps with Alabama's game plan. You don't have to end, but still, as Mike Shula just said, Dave, you need to sustain some drives. Absolutely, and look at that. 10 of 12, right? His two incompletions were the two interceptions, Dave. So he's been right on the ball. He's completed every pass, unfortunately, to do the other guys. That pass around uh, the feet of Zach Fletcher, who tried to scoop it up and nearly scooped it right into the hands of a blue jersey. Well, that was an odd play. You're right. Just coming out, trying to just do some momentum things where you change and then he scoops it up and look at how close that came. You got to look that football in. You don't run before you have the ball. You got to look it in. Got to make things happen. Spencer Pennington wearing number 13. He too with a bad shoulder except it's his throwing shoulder and he will be out for quite a while. He was the number two quarterback and played against Georgia before he got it. Royal fires a bullet in between two defenders. Dre Fulgham was the intended target. And that'll bring up a third down and ten. And Dave, that was good defense because they read the quarterback's eyes. When Coyle drops back, he looks right there. He's looking right there. Look at him. See them both play back. Everybody's coming that way. You've got to look off these receivers. These defensive backs are too good. You look, the likes of Vaughn Hutchins, they can react to the football very quickly. Alabama one of four on third down conversions this afternoon. Not very good this year overall. They're 11th in the league in third down conversions at 36 percent. Coyle has plenty of time. Fires to the near side. Pass off the hands of Fulgham, and that'll bring up a punting situation. Coyle had all day to throw. When I thought for a second there that Brody Coyle was going to try to find Zach Fletcher coming across the pocket. Got to look down. I guess that's uh, what you give up if you're playing in that dime package with six DBs. You, you're going to give them some time, but absolutely, that's 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 exactly what you give up. You give up the rush. Good kick from Bo Freeland. That'll send Espy back to the 19. Mike Espy, flag down at the 20-yard line. Fifty two yard kick eleven yard return. We'll wait on Thomas Ritter to give us the signal. That's the hand in the back. Old coach Madden used to teach us a trick about that. He said if you can read their name don't block them. <laughs> During the return. There's the play right the there. That's the block Three right there. Just push the hand in the block. Just a little inadvertent. You see the flag coming. Bell South listening answering. Deshaun Pearson, the sophomore at Ripley, Mississippi, picks up 10 on the play. Deshaun will forever be known as the man who scored the winning touchdown in the swamp two weeks ago against Florida. Good backside. Look at that backside vision. Now he's going to come back inside here. He sees it, comes back in, picks up yards. That's what you want. You want your quarterback to run with his eyes. You're running back to run with his eyes open, looking for that little seam. Pearson out over the 30 to the 30 one yard line gain of nine bring up a second down and very short John Latina's dream call second and one. Oh, he loves it he <laughs> absolutely loves it he said there's so many things we can do off it and I you have to give old Miss's offensive line a lot of credit they're locking up big men up front on Alabama they're locking up with them and allowing those backs to find that little hole This goes for the fullback Lorenzo Townsend and pretty good indication of what Ole Miss is trying to do here in the second half. That is just keep the chains moving. Well this is just as I always say there's John Latina but this is just big man on big man. Watch this here. Somebody's going to come around from the outside but you see how quickly he just sees that little step in there puts that head down Townsend knows that you're going to get yards. 
John Latino also coaches the offensive line. Those are his big boys up front. Good hole off the left side for Pearson. Run over these guys, you run around them, dodge them. Pretty nice average. Well, when you look at the running backs, Turner's averaging 4.5 yards a carry. Sean Pearson averaging 5 yards per carry. Ronald McClendon 6.8 per carry out of your backs. You know, that's good stuff. I mean, you, yeah. you know, you, you want that 4-plus yard carry. You'd love that to have a consistent 5-yard average. That's what oh. Sean Williams brings to the table, 5.5 oh. yards a carry. That's outstanding. 5 yards a carry every two plays you move the chains. Remember what Old Miss ran last year? What their running game was? Pathetic. It was ugly. Swing pass. A lot of room for Pearson. Run out of bounds at the 32-yard line. Roman Harper makes the stop. A gain of 17 yards. Well, just swing him out of the backfield. Look down. See, he's looking straight down the field. Now, last second he looks out there. Now he's cleared it. And look at this block right in there. It's a good block. That's a nice block right there. Come downfield, put the shoulder down. And again, watch this. You're going to see the little tiny block right in here. Now, right there, that's the block. You see where you just kind of get in his way. Let's call those chicken wing blocks, but uh, they're effective. Well, it's Tate Biddle out there blocking from his wide receiver spot. Moments ago. Speaking of that, that was one of the aspects about this running game, Dave, that John Latina and David Cutcliffe mentioned to us, is that running the football takes 11 guys. Last Absolutely. year they didn't have that. And, and that what they're talking about is that, you know, maybe on the perimeter, some of the receivers weren't blocking. You know, these guys their entire lives playing football worked on catching the football. They didn't work on pass blocking, and that's something they didn't really work on here until last offseason. Absolutely. They put a lot of time in. They talked about getting much more physical. Every day in spring they had one-on-ones. And they have. And the results are they can run the football. And last year Eli Manning tried to do it all himself and he couldn't. Rushing yards today 123 for Ole Miss. Came in averaging 170 per game. The play action. Manning will fire. Steps up in the pocket. Now scrambles down to the 26 yard line. John Pearson is your tailback. Manning stumbles but fires. Pass is caught. Collins breaks a tackle to the 10. Down to the six yard line. Charles Jones runs him out of bounds. This tackle from Charlie Pepra. And Collins just used his strength to shake away for a 20 yard pickup. Well, he drives him off the ball and then turns, and he's a big target. And look at him keep those legs going and just rip out of that tackle. I really enjoyed yesterday. That few minutes that we had with him, that was just fun to talk with. Talk about what he sees coming off the line. I'm looking at the cornerback's eyes. I'm reading his eyes, trying to get him to turn his hips. First and goal from the six. And off Pearson to the five, hit hard. Jawan Garth, the freshman out of Decatur, Alabama, makes his sixth stop, and it was a loud one. Garth is a guy that uh, coaches talk about, Dave, that said he was kind of just in, down in the dumps early in the season, wasn't playing much, but due to some injuries, got his chance, and in the last couple of weeks, he has taken everybody by storm. People are just in awe, the coaches and some of his teammates of his performances during the past couple of games. This guy has got a great upside. Yeah, just a freshman. He's got a lot of, a lot of years ahead of him. This is an impressive drive by Old Miss. They have set the tone in this second half. Well, Alabama's defensive front setting the tone on that play. No gain. And that'll bring up third and goal. Look at the difference that a year makes. Wow. wow. <laughs> that's, that's just a wow. I mean, well, what else you say? Wow. Well, last year, Alabama had nine tackles for loss, three sacks, 15 quarterback hurries, seven pass deflections. Here we go. Third down and goal from the three. In motion is Pearson. And he drops back, scrambling, diving for the end zone. Touchdown! Who says the 6'5 senior 
can't run. Well, I told you sometimes the smartest pass is not the pass. Coverage, step up in the pocket, rely on those linemen. Now, just try to get across that line, does a great job. Gets down under it, doesn't take a big hit. Oh, and after is up and good again by Jonathan Nichols, and it is 38 to 10. Wow, is this an 38 points by Ole Miss. It's the most points they've scored against Bama since 1970 when they won against the Crimson Tide with Archie Manning at the helm, 48 to 23 in Jackson, Mississippi. Kick off from Lee Rogers, sails down to the goal line, Ray Hudson. To the 21 yard line and dropped right there. Hey fans, now's your chance to enter the Toyota Tundra Double Cab You Pick 'em Football Contest. Just go online at jpsports.com, click on the Toyota banner to register and pick the winners. Weekly prizes will be given to the participant with the highest point total. At season's end, a randomly picked grand prize winner to be revealed on December 8th will receive a new 2004 Toyota Tundra four door decap truck. The Toyota You Pick 'em Football Contest. Eight forty-eight to go in the third quarter. Froyle stumbles under pressure, drops. L.P. Spence, eleven yards on the loss, his second sack of the season. When L.P. Spence plays that middle backer spot, when he comes, there he is, right there. Watch him come. He's going to just wait his time, and now just rip up through the middle. No place for Croyle to go. He waited for that play to develop up front. Lyman separated, and he just blitzed. L.P. Spence will turn 26 years old on October 26. He's had four knee operations. Here's the handoff on second and 21. Shaw to Williams. It's nine on the play. When you just get the feeling that Ole Miss is really lifting up. I mean, that last drive, the, the length of the field, the score, that just that set the tone not only for their offense but for their defense. Now, Alabama, they need to recapture something. They need to move the football. They've got to strike soon here. The Tide, one of five on third down conversions today. Looking at a third and long. Crow runs, fires, passes caught from Lance Taylor, who gets leveled by Kelvin Robinson. That's the second big hit of the day for Kelvin Robinson. Now listen to this crowd. Man, oh man. Well, watch this hit. This is a hit. Robinson comes up there. I mean, he just runs right through Taylor. Right there. Boy, that's the way you tackle. Put that helmet in there. Mm. I guess he stands at the 35 looking straight into the sun. A little good kick from Bo Freeland. Must be able to make the catch. Must be trying to get to the outside. This time Alabama has it read extremely well. That's the 38 yard line. Roman Parker makes the stop for Alabama. 47 yard punt, an eight yard return. Not a cloud in the sky. I mean, this is, if this isn't good football weather, I don't know what is. This is uh, one of those games that certainly brings out a lot of what SEC football is about tradition, excitement. Ronald McClendon with the carry for the Ole Miss Rebels. How things have changed, Dave. That last drive went 88 yards for the Rebels, mostly on the ground. Well, it was so efficient. Eli Manning using the run. Twink passes out there. Coming up with the football there was Pearson. Then all of a sudden, Chris Collins breaks the tackle. Then Manning, rather than force the ball, dives into the end zone. He did everything on that drive perfectly orchestrated. Second down and seven. Splendid. Runs right into the heart of that defensive front. Might have gotten a yard. For the best deals on cars, trucks, and SUVs, visit your local Toyota dealer today. 
Hey, this Alabama defense has had its uh, share of uh, dents and knocks, if you will. Uh, you, know, you, you lose Brooks Daniels before the season even started. Cornelius Wortham, another linebacker that you were counting on, has a bad elbow, arm. He's probably out for the rest of the year. I mean, you know, they're going to get that red shirt for Wortham as Manning throws it out of bounds. I mean, you can just go on and on and on and on. And it's tough to play in this league when you don't have all the bullets in the gun. It's almost impossible. You have to play around those players and don't think the other teams don't see those deficiencies when you're bringing in those second and third team players trying to play against the first team. They take advantage of it. That's the way the game, the game plan is designed to take advantage of that. On the other hand, it's an opportunity for guys like Juwan Garth to see some oh, time, yeah. and you might find that diamond in the rough. Absolutely, and I think they have one. Oh! Punt is blocked. Alabama will take it into the end zone from the 22-yard line. Touchdown, Crimson Tide. 38 to 16. That's the time of the block he gains. His third block kick. of the season and he just scoops it up at the 22 and takes it back and Dave that just took too long the punter has got to get that ball off quicker he just got a little bit just a little complacent in there took a like look like he took just a little bit longer and allowed the defense to come in there but a great play for Alabama it might oh there's and the one point after his block oh, wow but I think Alabama will take that trade we'll block your punt for six and you can block our extra point yeah, the holder never was able to get the ball down. 38-16, Ole Miss on top. Well, an interesting turn of events. A block punt results in a touchdown for the Crimson Tide. Now Robinson kicks it off. McClendon trying to get to the outside. Goldie to the 35, to the 40, to the 45, and run around at the 40. Seven yard line. Let's go back to the two blocked kicks. Remember, Ole Miss hadn't had a punt blocked in 50 games. Well, this punt just takes too long. See how long it takes, and Chris James just comes in perfect right where the foot was. He just put his hand, not roughing the punter, and he scoops it up and running in. But on the hold on the extra point, what happened there, you're going to see a bobble right there. Look, see, he never gets the ball up. Look at the ball. He can't get it up, and look how he finally puts it. It's on an angle. There's no way that ball had a chance to make it through. Ole Miss will stay with their ground game. Ronald McClendon picks up a couple of yards on the play. For the best deals on cars, trucks, and SUVs, visit your local Toyota dealer today. McClendon had somewhat of a tweaked hamstring a few weeks ago. Seems to be somewhat healthy now. See that big smile on Ronald's face. He smiles and he sees that gold tooth. That's where <laughs> Goldie. You're good. You're, you I are heard, on top heard, of it today. Well, you I, are so on top of it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, I heard you refer. I remember that Goldie. Pass nearly caught. Would have been a tough catch. Dave Biddle has a couple of touchdown receptions today. Charlie Pepper on the coverage. Boy, Tate Biddle has stepped up his play today. Two touchdowns early, coming across, making big catches. That was a good effort there on a, on a tough catch. Well, for Mike Schuler, it's been a day he'd just like to forget so far. Third down and seven from midfield. Ole Miss seven of ten on third down conversions today. A great rate. And he hit as he lets it go. Incomplete, and the Ole Miss defense has stopped the Rebels, and they may try to go after another punt. Why not? Yeah, why not? They were so successful last time. But I can tell you on the Ole Miss side, they're saying, hey, don't get that football. Don't get complacent. Over on the Alabama side, they're saying, go after that ball. Maybe you can get another one. Wouldn't that I've never seen that happen. Ridgeway, line drive kick. Sean Williams takes it at the 10. Sean Williams has some room on the near side. Good return. Alabama Ole Miss on the gridiron. Kenneth Darby, his first action of the game, busted out over midfield, down to the 40, and stumbles at the 33, Travis Johnson. 
brings him down in a flag at the 33 yard line. We haven't seen Darby until that moment. The freshman out of Huntsville, Alabama. Picks up 42 yards and you can add some more to this carry because of the face mask. Well Darby exploded to the hole and then Dave when he got down there boy he put that shoulder down and just blew him watch him explode to the hole now watch him when he puts his shoulder down and just runs over the defensive back. The face mask is right on the tail end right here he gives a good stiff arm he gets that hand up in the mouth right there in the face. But great line play you got to credit this look at this big block right there come inside that's a lock block right there then just run over top of the defensive back. First and ten. Fumble football. It's on the ground and the Rebels have recovered. He doesn't get the handoff right in there. He gets the ball raked out right in there. It might have been. I'm just looking to see who raked that football out. It might have been Bozeman who raked it out. Yeah, there's Bozeman. He pulls that ball out. Now scramble to get it. But how about Eric Oliver? He just is always around the football. A real vocal leader of that defense. Manning fires Collins close to the first down marker. Gain of nine on the play. What a turn of events boy Alabama. I mean you go you put that thing in the end zone and you make it a 38 23 maybe a 24 point game with uh, 24 points for Alabama with a two point conversion before the fourth quarter. And then, that was that was the chipping away. They had to put that one in there. That was the chipping away right there. That was a tremendous turn. And you have to credit the defense for pulling that ball out. So all those numbers just passed a couple of more players on the SEC career charts. Manning scrambling, throwing it away out of bounds. Nobody was open. That'll bring up a third down. Third and one as Mike Shula looks on and you know he mentioned those two interceptions in the first half you could tell they really frustrated him. I got to think that fumble is going to oh, yeah. sit with him for quite some time. Boy, it was just a great effort there just reaching in one of those defensive linemen going down just reaching in there trying to get a hand on the ball. Third and one. Ron, Ronald McClendon, your tailback behind the fullback Rosano. It's McClendon. Nearly lost a yard instead. Falls forward for a couple. John Dart finally brought him down, but that will be a first down for the Rebels offense. That's what I like in Ronald McClendon. That effort. Watch this. He's going to go down. He's got to come all the way back here now. Get those feet down. He's thinking first down. He just has to stretch and make that yard, and he did. That's heads up play. McClendon, nine carries, 41 yards today. McClendon to the 37 yard line. This is a series that's been dominated by Alabama. They lead 40 to 8 to 2. McClendon across midfield. Ronald McClendon to the 40. To the 30 and knocked out of bounds by Charles Jones, but a big chunk of yardage for the Ole Miss offense. A gain of 33. Well, you have to give credit to the line. Look at the hole. Right there's one block. He's got him locked in there. There's nothing in here. Now explodes through. Look at the acceleration because he saw the hole. Now get to the outside. Once he gets up in there, get to the outside where he can run his best. Get outside there. Try to get that. Use that speed. Outstanding line. Boy, they are coming off the football up front. That handoff goes to Turner. Gets a couple. Ronald McClendon now. 10 carries, 74 yards. And as Scott McKinney, our esteemed statistician, has told me that's a 7.4 average. Thank you, Scott. Buzz, Buzz likes that kind of stuff, don't you, Buzz? <laughs> Absolutely. Dave, remember when David Cutcliffe was talking to us yesterday? He was talking about the fact some folks said that this offense was conservative, and he said, "Look at the numbers Peyton put up with this offense at Tennessee." He says being 50-50 is not a question of running the exact number of plays; it's being able to run or pass exactly when you want to, and that's what this Rebel offense has been able to do today. They continue to run it. Here's Turner. 
driving his way to the 23 yard line. I mean, over 11,000 yards. But we got a graphic, and hopefully, we'll pull it up. The comparison between the two after the same number of games is quite amazing. First down for Ole Miss. Freddie Roach makes the tackle. Four yard gain for Tremaine Turner. When you compare Manning, Eli, and Peyton after the same number of games, look at how similar those numbers are. Yards, completion percentage, touchdowns. You can add three more touchdowns to Eli's total. Now he has 69 to his credit. But isn't that incredible? That is. It absolutely is. When, we, when I looked at it, when it first flashed up, I went, you got to be kidding me. I mean, after 36 games? Turner. Down to about the 13-yard line. However, let me say this one thing about the comparison, though. The number that matters most, Eli Manning is 25 and 17 as a starter. Peyton 40 and 9. But Eli trying to add to that win total right now as we have completed three quarters of play. Ole Miss 38, Alabama 16. Back with fourth quarter football after this. You're looking at the second largest crowd at Vaught Hemingway Stadium. 60,825. The largest was last year against Florida when they knocked off the Gators. Sent this crowd into a frenzy. A chance, by the way, to have some dinner with uh, Jerry, Dr. Jerry Hollingsworth last night. Dave, a nice man who feels named after him. Second down and five now. Pump fakes. Just ad living. Throws it out of bounds. One of the players, they just made a mistake. Manning throws to the corner of the end zone. And a flag down. A couple of flags are down. The intended receiver was Kerry Johnson. Ramsey Robinson was the man hanging on. Kerry Johnson will wait for the call. This is going to be interference right side of your screen. Look at Manning by time now when he goes out here. There's the hole right in there. You see him pulling him down. Boy, he might have had that football. That was Robinson who was pulling him down. He may have had that football. This will be the eighth penalty against Alabama. And remember, they were the least penalized team in the SEC coming into today. And David was I thought they had cops around him so you couldn't get near him. <laughs> First and goal. Pearson met at the line of scrimmage. I could hear the collision from way up in our press box. I couldn't see who got the helmet on him, but it was a loud explosion. Well, Anthony Madison got up there. Boy, that was a stick. I think it was Anthony Madison, the cornerback, who got up in there. Second and goal from the one. Pearson again denied. This time, Charlie Pepper throws him backwards. Boy, this line, this is tough Alabama football right here. Look at this. No penetration right there, but no defense given either. I mean, they just came up and stuck them in the hole. That's what you want. Denied again. Freddie Roach this time steps up to hit Pearson behind the line. It's fourth and goal from the wall, and Cutcliffe will send out the field goal unit. David Cutcliffe wasted no time. Joe Kynes and his group have to be happy, Dan. About that Alabama team. They stopped three times the exact same play. That lead, lead fullback lead with the halfback going in there. I mean, they stuck him, didn't give an inch. And good. Points 39, 40, and 41 for David Cutcliffe's Ole Miss Rebels.
Coyle to throw. Alabama needs some points in a hurry. Coyle running for that sideline down. Nobody hits him this time. Boy, that is a coverage sack right there. When you make your quarterback run like that, you're having great coverage downfield. Look at this. He drops back. Now, when he looks up right there, look at the coverage. He has nobody. He feels a little bit of pressure. Now, bails out. But what forced him to bail out was there was nobody to throw to. Great coverage downfield. Second down and seven after the three yard game. Well, I, I, Brody's probably running faster now than he ever has to that sideline. Yeah. He's getting chased with a bad separated shoulder. Pass nearly picked off, but caught from Tyrone. Pro throw, and that'll be a first down. And every time I see Croyle drop back there in that number 12, I have to flash back to my old number 12 from Alabama that I played with. Pressure coming. Croyle goes down. Vaughn Hutchins comes from a safety blitz. In there, made yet another big play defensively for the Rebels, a loss of 10. Just too much time. You can't come all the way from the outside there. That's just too much time sitting back there, not being able. Watch this again. Sit up in there. Look at this. Keep on fighting. Keep on fighting. Good pressure in there. And then you got the Hutchins coming from the outside. I think the coaches are enjoying that. Chuck Reef out. I know he is. There he is right over there. He's having a good time. This defense was beat up pretty good after Texas Tech came in here and put up 700 yards of offense against Ole Miss. But they responded by doing what? Going on the road to Florida and winning. Coyle fires to the far side of the field. Tim Castile makes the catch. The offensive coordinator for this Alabama team looking on on a third down and 16. Brandon Greer hit by Vaughn Hutchins incomplete and the Ole Miss defense stops the time with 10 05 to go in the football game and the crowd showing their support. Go Rebels defense. Haven't seen many of those signs. No. <laughs> that might be the first time. When, when you have 600 <laughs> yards against you, you don't get many go defense. Great looking kick from Bo Freeland. I mean, that thing sailed back to the 15-yard line. Mike Espy to the 35. A 59 yard kick, a 21 yard return. Nice punt from Bo Freeland, but Alabama still trailing. 41 to 16. 9.50 to go in the football game on a beautiful day in Oxford, Mississippi at Vaught Hemingway Stadium. Dave Neal, Dave Rowe, and Dave Buzz Baker. Glad you join us. Ole Miss takes over. Handoff goes to Tremaine Turner. Turner still on his feet, bouncing off a couple of defenders out over the 45 yard line. That'll be a first down after a gain of 12. Boy, this, uh, I guess you could say, running core of Ole Miss has been pretty good. Oh, it certainly has. It's been Tremaine Turner, it's been Pearson, it's been McClendon. They've just run with just abandoned, and they're just sliding in there. Look at that. Yardage today, 213 yards. McClendon gets to the outside, uses that speed, but they've had they've had depth at running back, something that they did not have last year. It's been that running game today. It's really helped uh, this entire offense rack up 419 yards of total offense. Continue to add to that trouble. Well, that total, I should say. Nico Ryan's makes the stop. This Ole Miss offense is very prolific. I mean, they've had five, make it now, including today, six great games over 400 yards of offense. Their lowest total was 370, and that came in the opener. Yeah. Bill. And I loved when you asked uh, David Cutcliffe, yeah, get a little conservative. <laughs> he said, no, all we do is we look at those, as you said, look at those uh, statistics, look at those points, look at those yards. Turner again, inside the 40 to the 37. He was known as the old professor. See what happens when you can get when you, when you leave people alone. You can do some research down there, Buzz. All right, Buzz. Here I'm going to put you on the spot. What was his record in 1914? Come on. Ooh. Ooh. 
Langston, what was Casey Stengel's record in 1914? <laughs> uh, 13 and 2. There you go. Langston was here for it, so he'd know. <laughs> That's Langston Rogers, sports information director here, and a good friend to all of us in the Southeastern Conference. He's just making it up. <laughs> Probably didn't play 15 games. <laughs> Second down and seven. Manning hit as he spun around. Dalton McKay Lozier with the sack. Fourth sack of the year for Dalton out of Toronto, Canada. Loss of 10 on the play. Well, McKay Lozier gets good penetration. See him come up and avoid that tie, that block out there, the kick out block. Good penetration coming up field. He's still playing. Dalton McKay is a guy that's motor is when it's on it is on last week for personal reasons he didn't practice much during the win didn't play against Southern Mississippi but came back uh, after taking care of what he had to take care of practice all week the coaches didn't hesitate putting him back on the field and he's a heck of a player I, I've enjoyed watching him play over his career pass is caught near side Mario Hill Boy, with a lead like this, if you're Ole Miss, you keep the ball in bounds. You don't fumble the football. Don't go out of bounds. Don't stop the clock. Just use that clock. Time management sometimes works in the favor of the team that has the lead. No one knows that better than David Cutcliffe. I asked him in the Florida game. I said, "Did you think you scored too early?" He said, "I was just happy to score <laughs> at the end of the game." Clock continues to move. What a start for this Ole Miss offense in the first quarter. I mean, before before Alabama knew what hit him, it was 10 nothing. Oh. We will step aside. The car's all done, ma'am, and here's your record. Delay a game, moves him back five yards. He thought Ole Miss was, was going to timeout, instead they took the delay. And you know, Dave, just looking at that picture of Mike Shula on the far sideline, the thing that came to my mind is I asked him what's different from when you started coaching in Alabama and now, and he said, I'm a little bit more vocal, I'm a little bit more into the play. Me, he will have a marvelous football team. He's too talented a coach and has too many good people around him to not win at Alabama. Pretty impressive showing today. For this Ole Miss offense, and I got to tell you something, pretty impressed with Brody Croyle. I mean, separated shoulder and all. He is hung in there today. Doesn't look like that bad shoulder's affected him at all. The pass caught by Tyrone Prothrow and picks up 13 yards. But here's a guy, Dan, who shows me a lot of guts. I mean, he knows his team needed him today on the road. And, uh, you know, the doctor said, the trainer said that this is one of those injuries that there's not really much they can do about it. There's no long term damage if he gets hit on it, but it's going to hurt like a son of a gun if he does get hit. Pass right. Caught by Lance Taylor. Well, absolutely. And the thing I was impressed with, Dave Rader, the offensive coach, said, you know, on Monday he couldn't throw. On Tuesday he went out there. On Wednesday he was starting to throw. And every day he got so much better. He said, I actually think he's going to play Saturday, and, and not many people did. So that's a great, great credit to him. I was teasing about that number 12. Of course, the 12 that, uh, as we look at Dave Raider, the 12 that uh, I watched uh, from Alabama was a guy named Stabler, who's a few boosts down. Croyle dodges a sack, hits his receiver. What a play from Brody Croyle. Lance Taylor. Play, play by play next to him, but uh, I wrote that arm all the way to the Super Bowl, my friend. Here's Croyle firing to the corner of the end zone. Got it. Touchdown Alabama. Nice throw from Brody Coyle. 22 yard strike to Ray Hudson. Boy, now you turn around and say, what if? But this is a great play. Watch him. He's going to come back. He's going to bide some time. He's got pressure in his face. Slide around. Stay with your receivers. Look. And he throws a dart across right over top of the defender. Drops it in there. Perfectly thrown. Look at the pressure. Avoid the pressure now. Square up. Oh boy, that's that's as well as you can throw across the field and then throw a strike. That's a nice, nice series. Alabama to go for the two-point conversion. Mike Shula sent to the play with his 
quarterback, the sophomore, Bernie Croyle. Croyle was 4 4 for 80 yards on that drive. Lost it up to the corner of the end zone. Pass is caught, but out of bounds by Trey Fulge and Vaughn Hutchins on the cover. So the two point conversion does not work. And it's a 19 point game. 41 22. The Rebels on top. Back to Oxford. Tide will attempt the onside kick. Bounces up and snagged in the air by the Tide. On that far side. Ward picked it up. Thurman Ward is the man who grabbed it in the air. We've seen a couple times this year onside kicks being returned for touchdowns, but not this time. Dave, it's designed to take that big high hop on the third hop. That's not that's not just just didn't happen that way. That is the way it's designed. And Ward just runs right down and just catches it in stride. If it gets that big hop, it goes over top of the receiving team. And, they, and that was perfect. Good kick from Kyle Robinson as well. Can't overlook his effort. Broyle in the shotgun. Pressure comes. Slides out of there. Throws it to his open receiver on the near side. He stays on his feet. Big play for Zach Fletcher, but he stepped out of bounds. Man, oh man, for a second wow. there, I thought Zach had no goal lines and headlines. Boy, Fletcher, when he looked that ball in, Broyle threw that thing on a dart. He run, he's running towards him. And he throws it on a dart and watch Fletcher go up for it and he stumbles when he comes down. Right in there he stumbles. Now watch his feet. Oh yeah, right there. You can see his foot was definitely Two out of bounds. Inches. Again, watch that right foot right there. There it is. It's out of bounds right there. Boy, and the official in great position to make that call. Gain of 14, picks up the first down. Royal fires again. Pass incomplete this time. Attended ball on the 32-yard line. Shovel pass. Not necessarily what they drew up. He was looking for Ray Hudson, but what it did was avoid the sack. Pressure came from Travis Blanchard, who just hang on, just hung on as long as he could. But a good play, heady play from Croy. It really is because he avoids about a 10-yard loss. It's just an overhand toss. Just too high for him, but a heads up play by the quarterback. Looking downfield, keeping those eyes open. And stops the clock, most importantly. Third down and 10 with 426 to play. And movement on that offensive line. That might have been Justin Smiley, but he was pointing across saying the defensive player are yelling out numbers and names. Let's see if it works. Head ball, upside, on the defense. Defense Down in five now. Four wide receivers in the game. Here comes some pressure. Troyle nailed as he lets it go. Pass is caught by Tyrone Prothrow, but Croyle holding that left shoulder. That's the first time he got really hit on that left side. Eric Oliver is the man who put the, the hit on Brody. And look at the way he's holding that left arm. You can see. You see the brace coming right down there on the left side? There's the black, the black sleeve on. He just got stuck right on that left shoulder, but delivered a strike to him. But Brody Croyle is hurting right now. That thing stings. Avalos, the third string quarterback, the baseball player. He certainly is a guy that uh, has a lot more confidence after a win last week as a starter. He didn't even think he was going to play at all this year. Next thing you know, he's starting against Southern Miss. Going through it a few times. Here's Sean Williams inside the 10, down to the nine yard line. In motion is Lance Taylor. Well, handed off to Sean Williams. Ran right into a defensive front that had moved that offensive line back a couple of yards. LP Spence makes the tackle. LP originally signed with this Rebel team at 97. You know what plays in the point here is the time. The time yeah. they need to hurry up a little bit. This is fourth quarter. You got to you got to score in a hurry. They're trying to get one score. 
Royal to throw over the middle. That's his man at the five yard line, Tim Castile. Now throw to the end zone. Lost it up. Williams, great catch, touchdown, Crimson Tide. John Williams on his fingertips takes it into the end zone. Makes it a 13 point game with the point after try coming up. And Dave, this was an extraordinary catch. I think this ball was actually overthrown, and Sean Williams just went to an extra gear. Look at this. He's going to stretch way out there. He's wide open. What great concentration by him to pull that ball in. Used his face mask to <laughs> Absolutely. keep control of the football. Not many guys do that these days. But another pretty good drive from this Alabama team that just won't die. 233 to go. Now you think they can have two onside kicks like they just had another one. Wow. Alabama gets that. That's going to really make this game interesting. Two point conversion coming up. They failed on their last attempt. They ran a fade to the top of the screen and just ran out of room. This time they go an in route. Knocked out of there. Intended for Zach Fletcher Vaughn Hutchinson on the coverage. 41 28 Ole Miss on top Alabama recovered their last kickoff which was an onside kick from Kyle Robinson they'll try to do it again now Ole Miss nine players ten yards away and they almost did it again the ball sailed out of bounds at the 48 yard line Thurman Ward tried to leap up and make it but just couldn't get his hands on it, but we've seen two pretty impressive quarterback in this place today, Dave. Well, we saw Eli Manning start off the hottest I've ever seen him, and Brody Croyle started off not bad. Eli running for a touchdown. We don't see that very often, and then Brody had a couple picks under a lot of pressure, but he threw a strike late in the game to get a score. So we've seen a lot of quarterbacks, seen a lot of scoring, a lot of points put on the board. I got to tell you, this is one of the gutsiest performances I've seen from a quarterback in a while. 21 to 29, 248 for Brody Croyle. Handoff. Loses a couple of yards for Sean Pearson. Timeout taken by Alabama. Let's check in with Buzz one more time. Uh, you know, Dave, interesting on this Alabama sideline. We were talking with Joe Kynes. He's been through a lot of different ex experiences in his coaching career, different staffs, interim coach. We asked him what the best thing about Mike Shula was coming into this situation. He said he's a guy that doesn't panic. They've got 166 years of experience, three former head coaches on that staff. They got blitzed early in the first half. They were in a big hole in the second half. And this is a staff that, that has not panicked. And they came in in a situation which I think was unique in all of college football and they have not only uh, worked tirelessly but they continue to do that and uh, and I think that uh, that better days are ahead and they have certainly you know you look at the scoreboard this afternoon and uh, you know you you know if you're an Alabama person you'd like to have the score in a different way but but I think they've got this ship righted and he's uh, he's got a good plan and going about it the right way Dave well you know everybody uh, learns with each game I go back to Mark Rick when he got the head coaching job in Georgia that first year he made some decisions on the sidelines that cost his team a couple of games I mean you think about Tennessee you think about an Auburn game and he was the first one to admit it that hey you know what maybe I you know maybe I did not do the right things but you know what happened he hasn't done that since and look where Georgia is right now they're ranked fourth in the country I think Mike Shula with each game each play each practice it's more and more comfortable in this role because I got to be honest with you, this is not the easiest thing in the world to no. come into this job in this situation well, to come in the situation that he came in under I mean no preseason no spring ball I mean, it's really hard for him but I liked his demeanor I like the way he's steady he's not up and down like a yo-yo he's steady he's got a course he knows that he's going to get players that he can build around Good days are ahead for Alabama football under that direction of that young man. Football players have got a lot of fun memories as Archie does. Wonderful person. Williams lets it bounce and Ole Miss will down it. At the two inch line. That is pretty impressive and who did it. The senior wide receiver their record holder on special teams Chris Collins. I mean here's a guy that has. 
numerous receiving records. And what does he do? He busts his tail on special teams. Special teams. A lot like Sean Williams, I might add. Absolutely. Special teams are special. Look at this. He almost throws it over to the official. Here, you take it. He does. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I like talking with him yesterday. That was a special time. You know, it was great. Two years ago, we had a chance to be here in a great football game. Ole Miss came back to win it against Alabama. It was the first time in 10 years that they had beaten Alabama. And I said, what do you remember about that game? And he was like, oh, I don't know much. Yeah. But then as we talked, he goes, remembered every specific detail about every play. Remember that one hand catch? No gain on the play, nearly a safety. Ray Hudson had to do all he could just to get back to the line of scrimmage. Our Napa Auto Care Center's players of the game. Uh, well, I think both of our selections are appropriate today. Brody Croyle should receive plenty of star accolades because I just think that I don't know what kind of pain he's in, but I know he's in a lot of pain. Well, congrats. Congratulations for that choice of the offensive line. They deserved it. The Rebel offensive line has done a masterful job today. Fumbled snap in the end zone. That'll be a safety. And Dave, could you see the way the defense reacted? That is the most exciting thing for a defensive line when you get a safety. It's a bobble snap, but regardless of how you get it, it is scoring a safety for your defense, and I mean, they were jumping around. I want to see if he can do this kick three times in a row. You know how close that last one yeah. was? Jermaine Turner, almost, uh, or excuse me, uh, Thurman Ward. Well, it's designed to take a little hop here now, take the big hop. Hope it didn't do it that time. Flag down though, right at the kick. Alabama might have been off sides. Well, I would have never have expected this. Bevy of activity at the Grove this afternoon. Oh boy. It's not very far. It's just over there outside the stadium, and it is one of the highlights of now that is what I call tailgating. I mean they got candelabras over there and silver and china and everything. The V formation. Eli Manning, David Cutcliffe, and John Latina, the offensive coordinator, and Chuck Drisback, the defensive coordinator. They're going to be happy, happy people tonight. First 3 0 SEC start since 1970. But you know what about this league? It's like any sport, really. You can't really pat yourself on the back because you got to turn around and do this all over again next week. Absolutely. Now they're gunning for you next week, but it's a it's a great start for Ole Miss. It's a tough start for Alabama, but it's a great one for Ole Miss. Hey, think they're taking some pictures yeah. here or something? And what I love is Langston getting in the shot. Yeah, Langston there, there's Rogers, Langston the right there. Information director. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll stand right next to you. Now Langston can't protect anybody. <laughs> Mike Shula. Not his day to day, but 